It is a dream of mankind to fly like a bird. Birds are very agile. They fly not with rotating components, so they fly only by flapping their wings. So we looked at the birds and we try to make a model that is powerful, ultra light, and it must have excellent aerodynamic qualities that would fly by its own and only by flapping its wings. So what would be better to use uh, the herring gull in its freedom, circling and swooping over the sea, and use this as a role model? So we bring a team together. There are generalists and also specialists in the field of aerodynamics, in the field of building gliders, and the task was to build an ultralight indoor flying model that is able to fly over your heads, so be careful later on. Uh, and this was one issue, to build it that lightweight that no one would be hurt if it uh, fell down. <laughs> so why do we all this? We are a company in the field of automation, and we'd like to do very lightweight structures because that's energy efficient, and we'd like to learn more about uh, pneumatics and airflow phenomena. So I now would like to take your seat belts on and you put your hats off. So maybe we try it once to fly Smartbird. Thank you. So we can now look at uh, the smart bird. So here is one without a skin. We have a wingspan of about two meters. The length is one meter and six. And the weight, it is only 450 grams. And it is all out of carbon fiber. In the middle, we have a motor. And we also have a gear in it and we use the gear to transfer uh, the circulation of the motor. So within the motor, we have three hall sensors that we know exactly where the wing uh, is. And if we now beat up and down, we, we have the possibility to fly like a bird. So if you go down, you have the large area of propulsion, and if you go up, um, the wings are not that large, and it is easier to get uh, up. So the next thing we did, or the challenges we did, was to coordinate this movement. We have to turn it go up and go down. We have a split wing. With the split wing, we get the lift at the upper wing, and we get the propulsion at the lower wing. Also, we see how we measure the aerodynamic efficiency. We had knowledge about the electromechanical efficiency, and then we can calculate the aerodynamic efficiency. So, therefore, it rises up from passive torsion to active torsion from 30% up to 
next thing we have to do, we have to control and regulate the whole structure. Only if you control and regulate it, you will get uh, that aerodynamic deficiency. So the overall consumption of energy is about 25 watts at takeoff and 16 to 80 watts uh, in flight. Thank you. Marcos, I think that we should fly it once more. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. When I was 16, I found this motorcycle. It was a dilapidated piece of junk that wasn't going, but I realized how special it was. Restoration of this motorcycle has taught me to improvise with mechanical things. My name is Mark Lesek. I live in Hobart, Tasmania. I'm director of Dynamic Welding and Engineering. It's a pretty cool place. We do machine shop work. We do aluminum welding. Seven years ago, I had an accident and lost uh, the best part of my arm. I got a prosthetic on my own insurance. It didn't work, it was very unreliable. It wasn't fixed to my body and flopped about. It simply wasn't up to the job. I thought, if you can fix your own motorcycle, why can't you fix a prosthetic? So I did a search to find out as much information as possible and came across the Cairns artificial arm. This is an antique arm from the early 1900s, and in its time, it was so mechanically advanced. With patent search on Google, I was able to find every single Cairns patent online. So I set about trying to reverse engineer it. The arm itself had many good features. It's body powered, which means it won't break down. You can use it for heavy duty work and you can also repair it yourself. And hold a beer. And hold a beer, exactly. Some of the new things I hope to add to this arm is an extra finger joint and it will be gear driven. It will also be lighter with spatiation materials such as magnesium and carbon fiber. That is so cool. Well, if you think how many people have lost limbs but can't afford the new electronic limbs, I mean, it, it is rewarding knowing that one day people will be able to wear something that Mark and I are working on. My hope for this artificial arm is to wear it and share it so amputees can live a normal life again. It doesn't matter if it's a bike, or an arm, or your life. If you can take it apart, if you can understand it, you can make it better.